on the water has been brought to you by We're down at the National Water Sports Centre. Gary James, thanks for having us. Thanks, Caveman. Thanks for having me. Oh, brilliant, mate. Now, these drag boats, high adrenaline action, mate. <laughs> what are you blokes doing? Drag floats at the Mardi Gras. It's drag boats, you idiot, not drag floats. Boats that race one another. <laughs> Oh, boats? Tim. Oh, bugger. <laughs> oh, look at these blokes. <laughs> right, eh, Gary? Forget those blokes. <laughs> Tell us about fair dick and drag boat racing, mate. I mean, firstly, what's the gear you got on there? Well, what, a lot of the gears that we have to wear, okay, man, is mandatory. We have to wear a race suit. As you can see, I'm pretty well decked out with a, a pretty good quality race suit. And one of the things that uh, the pro classes wear are ballistic shorts and what this prevents is in the case of me accidentally getting spat out and we hope that never happens of course it protects all my uh, private parts and also uh, stops me from getting a giant liquid enema <laughs> all right how about you jump in the jump seat we'll run through the boat safety is a big issue in this adrenaline pumping sport what safety measures are in place uh, well as well as the race suit which we've already explained caveman we've got our big uh, what we call a may west style life jacket which is a, a strap to my legs and also prevents um, me having a frontal impact if there's an impact with the steering wheel. Uh, also has a parachute on the back in case I do get spat out of the boat. Um, that deploys uh, from this, which is attached to the a hook on the boat here, and that will deploy and put my feet in the water first, which stops me tumbling. One of the other safety aspects we have is our dead man switch which kills the engine in case of, uh, of an emergency or I am thrown out of the boat in an accident. And I also have a, uh, a safety switch which is connected to my fuel system which will automatically shut the, uh, the fuel system off. We also wear, of course, Nomex uh, fireproof retardant on my face. Gloves, helmet, goggles, man, I'm ready to go. Fantastic. Now, if you do happen to go guts up and all this stuff's deployed, who's there to pick you up? We've got a great rescue team that run in our Rescue 2 boat, which is normally situated just out here on the point, and we have paramedics on board with divers, and they're normally first on the scene and, uh, and get you into the rescue boat as quickly as possible. Fantastic. Obviously, a lot of safety measures, and you certainly need it. How fast does it go? Well, at full noise, this boat will probably run uh, on a good day with water conditions like we've got out here today, probably around 150. <laughs> That's, That's mile an hour. Miles an hour. Yeah, for 400 metres. That is cracking along. They obviously, it's a liquid quarter mile for obvious reasons. Now, at that pace, what time are you doing the liquid quarter mile in? Yeah, roughly uh, my lapse times, uh, because we go from a rolling start, not so much a, uh, a standing start, because it's not like a car, we've got to propel it to move. And uh, it'll sort of run uh, around about uh, 8.4 seconds. <laughs> She's over pretty quick. Yeah, it's a quick run, that's why it's adrenaline action packed. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt about that. Now, um, what keeps you interested in it? You know, I get that a lot, and I guess you could put it down to a, it's like a drug, and uh, it's, it's, once it's in your blood, it's very hard to get out. Uh, I tried to retire about seven years ago, or eight years ago, and uh, man, it, it, I was doing the commentary up there, and still involved but there's nothing like being at the bum bum on the seat and the action on the water and uh, belting it out just belting that belting that's probably a good word and it, it does bite you pretty hard and i had to get back into it <laughs> right i noticed the big foil on the back what's that designed to do yeah the wing probably comes into play at about 100 miles an hour and if you think that this boat will probably run around regularly 146 147 mile an hour it gives me stability without the uh, the wing on the back the boat has a tendency to skate around on the bottom of its on its bottom right. if that makes sense it uh, and the the downforce just keeps the prop in the in the water keeps the boat nice and true what category is this boat this is what we categorize as a blown alcohol flat bottom blown meaning supercharged alcohol meaning the type of fuel that we use and flat bottom meaning the hull configuration so that's what they say is BAF blown alcohol flat <laughs> blown alcohol
What sort of horsepower does this thing put out? On a good day when the air temperature is right and we've got everything set properly, uh, we're looking around 1700 horsepower. Um, on, a, on a good day like the water conditions today, we'll be able to use all that power and the air is right. So uh, it looks like we'll be able to run uh, a good 140 plus out there today. They call this a liquid quarter mile for obvious reasons. Obviously water conditions play a huge part in how you drive. How do you adjust your driving for that? Well it's pretty simple. Uh, on a course like what we've got out here today, this is really good flat bottom water. And uh, you'll probably see this thing run, you know, 140, 143, something like that, over the 400 metres. Um, I'm pretty fussy about the water conditions myself, being such a, a load of the water machine, you do get a bit of a, a bum rush from the, from the water if it's too rough, and I just won't put it out there if it's too rough. Well, apart from your own safety, of course, you know, you've got to consider that of the boat. What is one of these words to put on the water? Yeah, well, looking at today's numbers, uh, to build one from scratch, you'd probably be looking at $100,000. Uh, just the engine alone will probably run you around seventy-five thousand dollars in just building parts and assembly and uh, the rest of it is probably made up of just boat and and uh, and, and v-drive for example so over probably a hundred plus that's a huge amount of money to be investing in a sport but when you get the adrenaline that you're getting i can imagine that it's just yeah look i don't smoke and i drink rarely and uh, if this is my vice and uh, well this is it so i think people <laughs> spend a lot of money on other stuff and <laughs> and uh, my wife loves it, my kids love it and uh, it's a bit of a family thing and we're all involved and um, hopefully one day I might be able to sit one of my kids in here and take over from dad. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. For all the rev out there, tell us a bit about the motor. Well the motor is a uh, based on a 454 cubic inch uh, Chevrolet, it is a truck block, it's now bought out to 462 cubic inches uh, so it's only small really against some of the stuff out there. Uh, we run a steel Crower crank, uh, aluminium Howard rods, Aries forged pistons, uh, we've got a roller camshaft, roller followers, um, a blower intake manifold, we've got a 1271 uh, supercharger on there uh, and the big bird catcher and uh, she'll guzzle up uh, roughly about uh, 20 litres of fuel in about uh, 12 seconds. So it's on methanol, so it makes some power and uh, there ain't nothing like it. Thanks very much, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for your time. Obviously, you can't let me have a go because you did say it's a purpose-built boat and uh, I don't know whether I've actually got the bottle to do it anyway. Caveman, if I had a spare seat, you'd be welcome to come for a ride in on any race day. But thanks for having me down here and I hope that gave a great insight to drag boat racing to all your viewers. Now for all you flat out rev heads out there, this is one of the only sports in motor racing that actually allows you into the pits to have a look at how these motors are put together and ask questions of the drivers. They love their boats, they love their engines. Providing you're not getting in the way, they're quite happy to answer. It's been a huge day on the water. We hope you've enjoyed the show. And remember, if you're sailing over the horizon, or even over the local pond, a bad day on the water is better than a good day at work. See you next week. On the Water has been brought to you by...